Just a few miles south of Nashville is the Tennessee Residents, and in 2011, they finished renovations on the house. Through the Tennessee Residents Foundation, they expanded out into the gardens and updated some of the historic gardens and added some new gardens, and we're gonna go take a look at some of those. We're here in one of the original historic gardens. I'm here with Sarah Lowe, the Tennessee Residents Horticulturalist. Thanks for having me out today. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today, Philip. Yeah. Thanks for coming and checking everything out that's in peak bloom right now with springtime. Yeah, it's wonderful. So this is one of the original gardens to the house. That's right. This is the Tennessee Residence. It was built in 1929 by, to 1931. And where we're right now is the historic garden, which is original to the site when the Wills family lived here. It became the Tennessee Residence and home to our governors in 1949 when it was bought by the state. So like the fountain and everything was original to the, the house? The fountain and the lily pond. This bone, this space is original. It has gone through a major landscape renovation plan, which was part of Mrs. Haslam's initiative when she arrived here at the residence, was to restore the landscape. Uh -huh. So she set out on a plan to revitalize it, renovate it, and put it all together so it'd be one beautiful space for all of our um, visitors and guests to the residence to see. Okay. This is a very formal element. It's kind of that direct access into the house view-wise, and then it kind of then opens up to the sides. The residence was originally named Far Hills by the Wills family just because of all the views of all the rolling hills that you could see in the landscape. Yeah, and it's nice I see three um, gates that lead you in different directions, right. you know, away from the house. It's kind of a great starting point when you're entering the gardens. This is a really nice, comfortable little quaint space. It's one of my favorite spots here at the Tennessee Residence. Just a beautiful little spot, part of the original historic gardens. The Wills family were um, big iris hybridizers here in Nashville, so we have several of their irises here, Nashboro, Natchez Trace, just to name a couple that are planted in the garden, as well as a lot of other perennials. Daylilies, um, the irises, coneflowers, gara, just all sorts of fun things just come alive in this garden during the summertime. Yeah, so it's real dormant during the winter, but in the summer it really fills in. It sure does fill and it's just exploding with color. So we have violas kind of scattered through it right now just to kind of have that pop of color. And I love this kind of um, rough and tumble wall that's along the edge here filled with some sedums and violas and things. Yeah, it's my favorite little moment kind of in this garden, kind of really sets it in and frames it, um, just kind of with the neat things we've been tucking in. Nice, yeah. And it's also, everything is so formal, and then you have this kind of rough and tumble wall that yeah. kind of makes it a little more comfortable. Right, just a little more whimsy. Yeah. Feels yeah. like a garden. Speaking of whimsy, there was a, a it looked like a little secret garden over there. Yes, there's a secret garden over there. Yeah. So do, would you like to come see it? Yeah, I'd love to go peek All in right, there. All right, let's go look. So this is definitely the secret garden I see here. Yes, this is the secret garden, a really cool, neat little garden room, all enclosed by yews. It was inspired by the book, The Secret Garden, and just really a neat space. Yeah, and the, I definitely noticed the four statues in the corners Yep, first. the four statues in the corner are, were original to when the Wills family lived here. Through the landscape renovation process, they were kind of scattered all over the property, and they actually found them all and then put them all together to anchor the four corners here in the garden. They are spring, summer, and fall, so they represent our four seasons. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of an overview of everything. Yes. And I, I also have to ask you about this really cool door um, with the little hole at the bottom. What's that? That's the little mouse hole. So that kind of invites our friendly little friends into the garden, just kind of adding that element of whimsy into this garden as well. So. Yeah, all are welcome. All are welcome. Very cool. And looking back at the door, I mean, that view of the house from here is is just breathtaking. No, it's one of my favorite views, just kind of captures everything that's here at the Tennessee residence yeah. and of a Tennessee garden. So this is a pretty huge uh, vegetable cutting garden you've got here. It's a beautiful garden. It's um, a lot of our visitors to the Tennessee residents love coming here. This is our kitchen and cutting garden. So it's just a neat place that's the kitchen part of it is all the fruits and vegetables that we have growing here in the garden. Uh -huh. um, everything that we grow here is harvested and used inside the kitchen and the residence for all the guests that come. And it's the cutting garden because everything that's growing in here, perennials, um, we use as cut flowers to make arrangements for our guests inside the residence as well. So that's Very our nice. kitchen and cutting garden. Yeah. I have to comment on this amazing statue in the center too. Yes, at the heart of the garden is our um, sundial armillary, was designed and created by Tim Matherson from the Tennessee Metal Museum in Memphis. So it's just a really neat piece. Um, we really engage school groups with this piece between it being a sundial and how you tell time to it also incorporates in all of the state symbols from the state of Tennessee. So it's always fun to quiz people to see if they know that the state bird that is the mockingbird and the state tree is the tulip poplar. Um, we've got the eastern box turtle on it, which is our state reptile 
pile and of course we have three red tomatoes which are three of them are red for the east middle and west parts of our state and of course yeah. the tomato is our state fruit and as far as kid groups and school groups go um, they can be really involved here right right we do a great field trip program here at the residence so kids will come and have a tour of the residence and then they get to come out in the garden so we have an activity for them to do in the garden when they come usually they get their hands dirty in some way either harvesting um, vegetables or planting seeds or planting a plant so they always have something to do in the garden yeah, when they very, come very cool let's uh, did they, is this some of the rows they did yes they planted some carrots for us last yeah. fall let's go look at those so this is cool. Y'all you you even um, label what school planted what and when. Right, I do, just to also keep track of when we planted things, what they are, but it also just gives recognition to the different schools that were here. So a lot of the different school groups get to see what other school groups did and then, you know, get to enjoy what everybody's done. And so then this group was planted in the fall, these carrots, and then they'll be harvested if they're ready in May by another school group when they come through. So it's kind of the quiet time in the garden. Um, in the next week or two, we'll get all the tomatoes planted, corn started, yeah. eggplants. So um, it'll really transition. This whole garden will look different in a yeah. couple of weeks when everything starts growing. And some of the warm vegetables, do y'all do y'all start those in the greenhouse over here? Um, yes, we do start some of them in the greenhouse. So Perfect. it's a neat spot. I see a lot of trees around the edge and, tr and bushes. Are those some things that... Right, we have um, also fruit in the garden. It's just not vegetables because um, we've got some fig trees. Right. We also have blueberries, blackberries um, in the garden because a lot of our um, groups with the school groups don't necessarily have seen things growing in a garden. So right. for them to see what a blackberry grows on, yeah. you know, they're always amazed by that. So I bet this is a really popular place for groups uh, to meet in. Yes, this is our greenhouse, so we'll welcome our field trip groups in here. Um, some groups will come in, plant up um, plants and pots to take home. We'll also set up all the tables in here where they'll shell the peas. So we try to get the groups in here. Plus, so many kids also have not seen a greenhouse before, so they love to come and see what we have growing inside the greenhouse. So right. We do have some seeds that we have started, some cuttings of some other plants, and then we just have some plants on display just so they can see the different plants that we have growing here in the greenhouse. Yeah, and lots of fun textures. There's lots of fun textures, colors. Um, we just try to have something fun for them to see that they'll remember when they yeah. their visit here. So if someone wants to visit, how do they go about doing that? All they have to do, you can Google Tennessee residents or you can go to tn.gov forward slash residents and you can get all the information about visiting out here. You can sign up for a historical tour, which is mainly inside the residence, or you can sign up for a field trip. It is a place not to miss. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for having us out, Sarah. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.